So it's very quickly getting very real in the impeachment inquiry against Donald Trump. This is starting to now get into people are going to have to show up. People are going to have to provide documents or maybe face the consequences of not doing so, although it's not totally clear in this administration if there will be ever consequences for ignoring subpoenas. And the latest person subpoenaed is Rudy uh, Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, who has been subpoenaed by the House Intelligence Committee to provide a number of different documents. And Rudy, of course, is one of the sort of top people who's been involved in this campaign to pressure Ukraine into helping Donald Trump in 2020 by investigating, which is, of course, of course, code for investigate and determine that you, as a result of that investigation, need to say negative things about Joe Biden. The letter to Rudy Giuliani identifies him as an agent of Trump in the scheme to advance Trump's interests through abuses of power. And they want documents from Rudy. And I don't know that they're going to get documents from Rudy. This is an administration that has gotten away with simply ignoring subpoenas and subpoena power, although not uncontroversial. I mean, listen, there are reasonable debates you can have about edge cases or blurry area cases with regard to subpoena power. Can subpoena power be abused? You know, with any mechanism, there are debates to be had. But this is an administration that has just directly and and unabashedly flouted uh, subpoena power, ignoring all sorts of requests for everything from Donald Trump business records that could be tied to emoluments clause violations or potential money laundering all the way up through and including requests, subpoena requests for um, witnesses to show up and uh, talk about possible crimes that they have witnessed. So. I hope that subpoenas that are a part of an impeachment inquiry will not be allowed to be ignored. But I don't know the answer to that because the precedent under this administration has been that they just ignore them and then there are no consequences. Now, we've also learned in the last 24 hours that the secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, was also listening in uh, live on that phone call on July 25th between Donald Trump and the Ukrainian president. We didn't previously know that prior to, you know, 12 or 16 hours ago. And Pompeo himself is becoming a bigger and bigger part of this entire impeachment inquiry. And what we are seeing, if we zoom out a little bit, is that this is growing into one of the most sort of all encompassing political scandals for an administration in a long time. And I think that it actually is informative to compare and contrast to the impeachment of Bill Clinton, because a lot of people on the right love to bring up Bill Clinton in the context of Trump's wrongdoing and impeachment and say, look, Clinton got impeached. Uh, let's go back to Bill Clinton's impeachment. Bill Clinton was impeached for lying about an affair. Bill Clinton cooperated. Bill Clinton did not attempt to tamper with witnesses. He didn't attempt to obstruct the process of investigation. He didn't ignore subpoenas. His attorney wasn't part of the scandal. His secretary of state wasn't part of the scandal. His attorney general wasn't part of the scandal. And this is one of the major differences here that we see with what's happening with Donald Trump. It's not just Trump did a thing. First of all, the thing Trump did is really bad. It's way worse than lying about an affair. It's pressuring. Pressuring is not even a heavy enough word, but it's extorting a foreign power to smear a possible election opponent. That's number one. But Trump's lawyer, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, is involved. His attorney general, William Barr, is involved. His secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, is involved. Documents related to the incident, in this case, a full transcript of the phone call on July 25th with the Ukrainian president has been moved from the place where it would normally be kept to some other place in order to obscure and obfuscate. So anyone even remotely comparing this to the Clinton impeachment, I welcome that comparison. If you think that there's anything similar about the two situations, you don't understand the facts or you're deliberately ignoring them. But that then gets us to the real sort of important pressing question, which is what does happen if Rudy Giuliani ignores the subpoena? Can you imagine that? I mean, just think back to the immediately post 9 11 days. At one point, Rudy Giuliani was a widely respected politician in the United States, even by many Democrats. Now, I want to be very clear 
Uh, many of those Democrats disagreed with the policies of Rudy Giuliani in New York City, for example, broken windows, policing and so on. But in a very general sense, to the extent that you see bipartisan, not support, but at least recognition that someone is a good faith actor. Rudy Giuliani was one of those people for a period of time in the United States. Then he became mayor 9 11, where any question he was asked politically was you remember I was mayor during 9 11, right? And now he has become Trump's hatchet man involved in who knows how many possible crimes involved as maybe the most irrational, reflexive defender of anything that Donald Trump does or says always all the time. And there's some sad element to it. I read some commentaries online saying it's actually sad what's happened to Rudy Giuliani. Uh, he chose this. He chose this. So I, I don't feel bad for the guy, but it is interesting to look at just how far he has fallen from being a an American political character that at one point at least had the respect, if not support of people on the other side of the political aisle. We will see what happens as far as the Rudy, Rudy Giuliani subpoena.